Hi folks, Joseph Kursky here with you to talk about 3D globes and scenes and how to use them as instructional tools. Now we're going to be using something called the ArcGIS Online platform, the ArcGIS Online platform. And this platform actually has a variety of 3D techniques, not only just to visualize things in three dimensions, actually four dimensions when you think about time, but also you can analyze in 3D. Now let's start off with the basics. Because we live in a 3D world, it makes sense that there is increasing interest in modeling the world with geotechnologies, geographic information systems, remote sensing, and so on, web mapping, in 3D, under the land surface, under the oceans, inside buildings, or along a streetscape in a city. Even for 3D representations of traditional 2D data. Let me show you a few examples. So here I've got the latest earthquakes, actually just for a month, visualized in a 3D scene. So I configured this in ArcGIS Online, and then I said, please make me a 3D scene. So I can see right here some clusters. For example, look at Puerto Rico during this particular month. And it's just all tied to a geodatabase. So I've got attribute information for every single one of these earthquakes. I can look at aftermaths. I can look at foreshocks, aftershocks, etc. I could look at the, I could change the base map to oceans, for example. And then I could look at the relationship of trenches to some of these earthquakes. So I can see the relationship of the plate boundaries to earthquakes. So that is a visualization of earthquakes in 3D. And I got that data from the U.S. Geological Survey National Earthquake Information Center in Golden, Colorado, as a just a table. It's a table of data with latitude, longitudes, magnitudes, depth, quality of the reading, and so on. So that is just a simple example, but a powerful one, right? I mean, you could look at the hot spot in Hawaii, for example, and find out why the hot spot is so prone to earthquakes and volcanoes. You could add the volcano information on top of this. But again, keeping it pretty simple, all I've got is a base map and earthquakes, and it's global. So I can actually examine anywhere around the planet in 3D using the earthquake data. Now, for example, I could look at a, a place like Australia and see, oh, okay, in this particular month, only one earthquake happened, but look, surrounding it, especially out in New Zealand and Fiji and so on, you've got that edge of the ring of fire. So again, a very good teaching technique and a very compelling one to inspire us to ask deeper questions. Get it? Deeper? Earthquakes? Deeper? Little geo pun there for you. Let's change it to another example now. Let's take a look at some data that I actually got from a school district where school students are actually looking at and launching weather balloons. So in this particular case, they launched this weather balloon, they gave me the table of data, and I said, look, you can map this in 3D using the 3D scene viewer. And then you can make it available. As you probably suspect here, this is all running in a web browser. Okay, so I've just got a URL at the top of this map, and I'm going to move the map down just ever so slightly so you can see the URL. See, look at that. I've just got it as denverro.maps.arcgis.com. You could use this in your own ArcGIS online organization. But the point is, is that it's running in a web browser. You can share it. You can save it. You can configure it in different ways. How, what do I mean, configure it in different ways? Well, right now I'm looking at, as you can see the legend here, the altitude in meters. And notice how the weather balloon went from west to east, and then as it hit the tropopause, it actually went back to the west a little bit, which is really fascinating to be able to do this, to be able to rotate this scene around. And we can see that, yeah, it actually rotated. It, it went to the west a slight uh, ways, and then it actually went down into uh, this particular field. Again, I could change the base map so I could figure out a bit more um, exactly where it landed. But the point is, is that I just map this based on an attribute. Now, if I don't like that attribute, if I wanna change it to something else, I can modify scene. And then I can click over here in the modify layers and instead of altitude, well, I've got uh, atmosphere constituents. I've got maybe temperature. Maybe I wanna look at the temperature and how it changed as the balloon rose in the atmosphere. Fascinating. So now I can see that, oh, as it rose, as it got higher, right, it got colder. And as you probably know, uh, if I if it had been able to go into the tropopause, the tropo, past the tropopause into the troposphere, it gets warmer, right, in the, in the uh, stratosphere as you go higher. So here it gets colder as it goes up. Makes sense. Look, I've got counts and amounts. I've got all kinds of ways I can visualize this. Cylinders, other, other uh, 3D 
uh, symbols. But let's keep it pretty simple. But that's that's the one way to change this is just to go into the configure layer, and then I could resave this, and you would see what I'm seeing right now. Okay, let's go to another example. Let's again step back to a really a basic core thing that I would want my students to learn about. For example, I'm I'm looking at October 17, 2018, which is when I'm making this video. And look, I I can I can visualize how the sun is going across the sky for different places on the planet. Okay, so right now it's morning, but this afternoon the shadows are going to go like this. And why does it have the shape that it does? Well, because it's October. So if I skip ahead to December, ah, look, the North Pole is is totally in shadow. Mm -hmm. and, and I can note the different sunrises and sunsets. If I change it to something like June, ah, now the southern latitudes, the high latitudes are in shadow. So I could teach about seasons and seasonal procession uh, there, and also daily, right? Sunrise, sunset around different points around the globe. So that's just a, a daylight visualization right there, but I've actually got some data inside here. Let me show you what I've got. Potential one and three meter rise. So I've got the one meter rise, potential one meter rise in sea level. Okay, which areas on the planet are going to be impacted if the sea level rises by meters? So I can see southern Louisiana, coastal Florida, especially the uh, uh, southwest tip the Bahamas, not a good thing, parts of Cuba, etc., Puerto Rico, it's, and so on. So I can look at different places. Look at this place over here where the Orinoco flows into the uh, Atlantic, and let's just pan down to the Amazon, uh, as suspected, severely potentially impacted. But, but it's global, right? So I can actually look any place I want to on the planet and see the potential one and three meter rise for different places around the globe. And as I suspect also, I'm going to have the same situation in the Nile Delta, and I do. So that's the one meter rise. I've also got the potential five meter rise here, so I'll all I have to do is click on that and I can again I want to be critical of the data where did the data come from so there's metadata associated with these layers that I'm showing you so you understand where the data came from and the elevation data that was used to create this 3d scene as is frequently in the news a place like Bangladesh right we've got a large part of the country that's potentially impacted by both the one and the five meter rise what does that mean what maybe we should add population density on top of this. So uh, you can see that these these maps and visualizations teach us to ask better questions. That's one of the exciting things about these. Okay, let's let's move on. Now, let's take a look at uh, the earthquake data once more, but now I've got this in a animation. So you can look up and find out how to build this animation as I'm doing right here. I'm going to slide the configurable options over because I wanted you to see that I've got it uh, in the interval between attribute change so I've got different attributes mapped I've got it at 10,000 milliseconds now I can make it longer or shorter but as you can see it's stepping through the attributes in my geo database that's actually behind the the scene another pun a behind the scene and I can look at magnitude depth to earthquake and which ones are in the ocean which ones are on land and so on so this is a a data visualization, a spinning globe type of vis visualization that you can build on your 3D scene. Let's move on. Let's say here I want to look at, uh, I want to visualize proposed new developments. So I'm looking at, hey, proposed development and which buildings could be constructed and then which, which areas would be in shadow based on this particular new development. So this is a tool, again, 3D scene and Sometimes students ask, well, when are we ever going to use this in, in, you know, beyond the classroom? Well, you can point to, hey, city planners, <clears throat> transportation engineers, others, wild, uh, fish and wildlife people will, will use this to visualize the impact of a certain construction on their park, in their city, and so on. So you can see, okay, if I built these towers, what areas would be impact? What areas would be in shadow? What about pedestrian access, vehicle access, and so on? Okay, so let's go ahead and move on to, okay, which areas in a, a city would be um, close or far from a transit station? So we have actually got the buildings color coded in this in this case in San Francisco, as you can see, based on walking time to public transport. So these bluish, purplish buildings are less than a minute. Here's the Transamerica Pyramid. And then these others are more than 19 minutes away from public transport. And you can see uh, the the pattern that maybe we would use to improve transportation access or trans mass transit access to, to people. We can do this in 2D, sure, 
but in 3D, only do it if it adds value. That's my whole mantra, folks. Use these tools if it adds value to your instruction. Sometimes your 2D maps, or even your paper maps, for that matter, might be sufficient for your instructional use. Sometimes not, and when not, 2D or 3D digital web mapping based on geographic information systems might be the way to go. Let's move on. You could use 3D scenes. In this case, these folks have used a 3D scene to visualize bicycle races. And so we can use, they've got this embedded in their, in their web page, but they're visualizing the bicycle race, looking at terrain, steepness, and so on. And so they've created a series of 3D scenes and they've animated them and placed them in their web page. So the interesting thing about all this is that these, these visualizations and maps, you can embed into videos, you can put them in web pages, presentations, Prezi, Sway, PowerPoint even. So that's pretty exciting when you think about the ways that you're communicating with these 2D and 3D maps. Okay, here's another one. I want to visualize buildings. I also want to texturize them with realistic sides for the building. So again, if I'm planning, in this case, Wellington, New Zealand, good on you, mate. If I want to visualize the, again, I want a new bicycle trail or I want a, uh, I want to, I'm going to tear down this building and build something in its place. What would be visually appealing? What fits the zoning code? What about uh, infrastructure that needs to be there? How deep do I need to sink the pylons? Uh, what about water and, and, and sewage and uh, electrical needs and fiber optic cable and all that other stuff that needs to be in place for anything to be constructed? So again, um, this one in particular is actually draped on a satellite image, as you can see here. It's not real time, but that way you see a little bit more of what it actually is going to look like as opposed to those schematic drawings. So all good. Uh, let's let's look at one more. Here is here is the, the view from the Melbourne Star, which is a big uh, Ferris wheel. It's a big uh, uh, wheel that you can ride on. I want to visualize which areas would be visible based on this is an area that's being heavily uh, redeveloped in uh, the city. So if I built a type of building or other kinds of infra infrastructure, what will I be able to be see? What will I be able to see from the top of the wheel, and what would I now be blocked from seeing? So all kinds of interesting visualizations that you can do with these 2D and 3D maps, and it's not just for education. I mean, look at the uh, the government of Queensland; they've created this Queensland globe where you can add and visualize all kinds of things from environment to transportation to water to biodiversity. You can add layers. So I'm looking at uh, economics, elevation, and so on. I can add flora and fauna uh, to to this map, so I can customize my experience and really understand the relationships, the patterns, the trends in these different uh, data layers. And of course, I've got scalable ability here, so I can zoom, pan, add, subtract. I can even export some of this data into a different application so I can further uh, do analysis with the data. So that is just a brief tour of some of the compelling 3D scenes and globes that you can actually use in your instruction and also in your research. And I've used these techniques and maps folks at all levels. I've used them with primary school students. I've used them in university courses that I teach. I've used them in professional development opportunities for educators uh, at all levels. Again, community college, university, uh, primary, secondary. So there's really no limit to uh, what you can do with this. Again, pick the most appropriate tools for the job. Show some of these compelling visualizations. And then the most important thing, build your own. Don't just show these and analyze patterns, relationships, and trends. You can actually build your own 3D scenes in ArcGIS, the digital GIS platform from Esri. All right, folks, thanks. Map on.